Hi there, thanks for checking out our channel. Uh, this is um, one of the first times you've ever seen one of our videos. We appreciate you finding us. We've got about 440 videos or so on YouTube of different uh, aspects of repairs and electric fence units of different multitude of brands and ages. Uh, we've got some cattle scale repair videos and how things work and how to test things and all sorts of stuff. Review videos on different fence charges that we get in of the good and the bad of, of things. So if you want to check us out, uh, you can go to our website, which is a link down in the description area below. So go down there if you want to find it. It's fencerfixer.com. Fencer and Fixer, both spelled with an F as in Frank. Um, but you can find out more about us. We also have the Cattle Scale Repair uh, website as well. We work on cattle scales and low bars for weighing cattle and EID readers for ear, reading ear tags. Um, but what I wanted to do on this video is um, we get phone calls on occasion where... Uh, someone's wanting to uh, troubleshoot their unit to see if it was working or not because they checked the fence, can't find anything wrong with the fence, but you know the problem isn't being with this and they're not sure. But every once in a while, people will have these fault finders. It have to be Gallagher. This is a Gallagher fault finder. It have to be the Gallagher one. It could be Speed Right, Stay Fix, whoever. Um, and they'll have one of these fault finders and want to check their unit. And Speed rights, when you buy one of theirs and stay fixed when you buy one of their fault finders and remotes and stuff, they don't have, uh, they have a metal plate on the back of it which acts as the ground be be between your hand and your body and your feet touching the ground. So it acts out, so your body acts as a ground. Gallagher's um, come with a ground probe. You don't have to use it, but it snaps down on this lower corner right here on this little peg. So it would snap on there, set the ground probe in the ground and stuff. If you don't use that, it has, there's a metal plate on the inside. I don't have a unit you know, open, but there's a metal plate, uh, like a backing on the inside behind this uh, front cover. This is a, a label that uh, is wore off. This is where it has all the serial number and stuff. So this isn't the backing I'm talking about, but it's on the inside of this case and this back cover. And it uses your body through induction as the ground. So when people are trying to test their unit, if they've got a fault finder, and they don't have the ground probe, so say speed rights or safe fix don't have a ground probe, or they have this Gallagher and they lost the ground probe. Um, when you test the unit on its own, you got to be touching. If you touch just the hot side or just the ground side, you're only going to get a partial reading, because when you're out on the fence, you're, you are touching ground because your body's acting as the ground. You know, because you're putting your hand on the thing. It's back, got the backing there, or speed rights have that metal plate in the back which goes to your hand, which is your body's acting as a ground, so you have to be touching ground and the fence terminal at the same time. You can't touch one or the other. I'll show you what happens. So, and you can't just put your finger on there, and, and this is when you're sitting on, stand, sitting on the, the charger on the bench. So, this is the hot side. This is your ground side of the tester. So, if you go just to the hot side and put it on there, see, you only get a, a partial reading. We're getting 1.3. Go to this tester, put that on there. Well, 3.9, 4. So, we're, so that's kind of a weird uh, difference in reading, but it's either way, you're only getting a partial reading. Let me go get one more tester here. If I can find it. If I can't find it, we won't worry about it. Oh, here it is. Like, here's another uh, tester. It's the Gallagher Digital Fence Voltmeter. It's a uh, DVM3 was its old name. See, it comes with a, a ground probe. So when you put, when you're using it on the fence, you would stick this in the dirt or lay it on the ground, the, the dirt, and put your foot on it so it holds it in place. The ground's too hard. And you're going basically across the fence and ground that way. So see, we're getting uh, 10,000 volts out of this thing with this tester. So when you're putting just the hot side on there, you're only getting a partial reading. So what you've got to do, if you don't have the ground probe for your tester, whether it's a Gallagher one or a uh, Speed Rider Stay Fix one, you've got to attach a wire from the ground side of the tester to the ground terminal uh, somehow, however you got to do it. What I do is I take a little alligator clip like this, which you can, this is one, you know, that clip on the fence and ground, you know, that comes with these, some of these fence chargers. You can use a little bitty alligator clip or something. But basically, you're going to attach it. You know, I'm going to bite it over the top, and it's basically going to rest right up against that metal tab there. And you're going to take the end, other end of the wire, and you're going to go to the ground side. So this little red wire here is my ground, and then this little peg up here is my hot. So watch what happens now. 
So now we're really getting, oops, there it is. Save, uh, it ain't reading 16,000. These little fault finder things get a little squirrely when you get them right at the terminals. But see how much better of a reading we're getting? We were getting a four. Now we're getting almost 16. That's it's not putting out 16,000. Probably putting out that 10,000 range. This thing doesn't go that high. But these fault finders are really, uh, if, if, if any kind, really, they get really squirrely when you get right up to the fence yard, right up close because a big magnetic field with this pulsing going on and stuff. So these get a little squirrely when you get right up on them. So if you get, get it down the fence line a little ways, a little more accurate of a reading. But see, if you go just to the fence side, you get a partial reading. So you have to touch between fence and ground at the same time. So you have to have some kind of wire attached to the ground side or like on the back, the speed rise, that metal plate, you've got a little peg thing, kind of like this, in a corner somewhere on the back, and you could clip a little alligator clip on there, the piece of wire that's insulated, strip off a little bit, and touch that to the ground side while you're putting the other side to the fence side. So you can use a fault finder to test your fence charger on its own on the bench, but you got to be touching ground in the hot at the same time. You can't go just to the hot side. So that's a little tidbit for you. So if you've got one of these and you're trying to test your fence charger, it won't matter what brand it is, but if you've a uh, fence charger, what brand of fault finders, you got to be touching ground at the hot same time. If you don't, if you can't get a way to touch the ground with the little clip or something, can't not going to be able to get it. You'll, if you get a pretty good reading, like, well, I'm getting three to five, you know, it's reading three, three, four, or two, or, you know, it's probably doing something good because at least you're getting some kind of okay reading. But if you went across both at the same time, you really get the, should get a lot higher reading. So I wanted to make that video because people ask about that all the time, you know, when I'm troubleshooting uh, either via text message, phone call, or email, if they, uh, well, if they don't have a fence tester of some sort, you know, then we're just shooting in the breeze. But if they've got a fault finder, I try to explain that to them. Sometimes it's hard to explain. So I thought, well, maybe we make a video. I got one of these in for repair. Let me fix the tester, and then we'll show how to do that. So hopefully it helps you out. Uh, if you got any other questions, uh, leave them down below or give me a call. Go to the website. Um, email me, text me, call me. Uh, that's all I do is work on these things. So if you got a question on something, I can probably help you figure it out. That's what I do. So we also sell parts for units uh, on most brands or certain brands we can't sell parts for because of uh, insurance liability policy of the manufacturer. But most brands, 80, 90% of them we can sell the parts for. So if you need parts or you need uh, help with something, give me a call. Remember to, to uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. And until next time, we'll see you later on.